America is going to Mars. That's what Elon Musk has been saying for years, and now President Donald Trump has endorsed the goal as well. In the same way that landing on the moon kicked off a space race in the 1960s, the mission to Mars is sure to draw out competition from America's biggest international rivals. Only this time around, that's not the Soviet Union or the Russians. The USA will be in a race with China to plant their flag on the red planet. So we are all familiar at this point with Elon Musk's vision for Mars, but what would it look like if China established a Martian colony of their own? You might be surprised to hear that this is something that the Chinese have already begun preparing for. They've been rehearsing for a Mars colony for years now. There are actually two prototype Mars bases in China as we speak. They are both constructed in remote areas of the northern desert that are eerily similar to the Martian landscape, and they make for a pretty convincing simulation of what life on Mars would look like. Mars base number one is located in Gansu, China. This is at the edge of the Gobi Desert that stretches north into Mongolia. This is China's first Mars simulation base, and it looks exactly like something straight out of a science fiction movie. This facility was built in 2019 at a cost of $61 million. The Chinese promoted the Mars base by setting a reality TV show there, where celebrities were trained by real Chinese astronauts and scientists to complete fictional space missions. It's now used as a center for education and tourism, basically to inspire the younger generation to a career in the space program where they can brave the journey to a real Mars base in the future. It's a pretty convincing Mars base. They've got a big, comfortable sleeping quarters, a fancy command center with giant curving screens. They're growing wheat crops indoors and have basically every amenity you would need. Outside is a simulated Mars environment with realistic spacesuits, a giant exploration vehicle, rovers, a landed crew capsule, and for some reason, the black monolith slab from 2001, a space odyssey. Anyway, Mars base number one is basically the public relations department of China's space colonizing mission. It's more like a themed hotel than anything, which makes sense if you're going to convince people to fly to Mars with the likely prospect of dying millions of miles away from home on a cold, dead alien world. Then this is probably the best way to ease them into it. All of these busloads of school children are being preconditioned for their Martian future. And then we have Mars Camp. This is a bit more of a realistic utilitarian take on China's first space colony. Mars Camp is even further into the desert of northwestern China, in one of the most remote areas of the country, and far away from human habitation. The place even has the same red tint as the planet Mars. Mars Camp is essentially a bunch of shipping containers all cobbled together. It lacks the high ceilings, bubble domes, and colorful lighting of Mars Base 1, but Mars Camp is definitely a more authentic vision of what the first attempt at a deep space colony might look like. The Chinese refer to this site as a place for scientific learning and what they call patriotic education for young pioneers. So again, training the next generation to happily risk their lives in space on an unprecedented colonization attempt for the glory of the nation. And this is a nation that has already proven themselves more than capable of advanced space exploration. In 2021, China became the second nation to have successfully placed a rover on the surface of Mars. The Tianwen-1 mission consisted of an orbiter, lander, and a six-wheeled solar-powered vehicle that is about the size of a smart car. The original mission plan for the rover was just three months of exploration, but it ended up going for almost one full year and covering two kilometers of the Martian surface. In that time, Chinese scientists made new discoveries about Mars. It was previously believed that water on Mars had dried up several billion years ago, but China's new study is changing that hypothesis. Tianwen uncovered evidence of gigantic ancient floods that overtook low-lying areas of the planet as recently as 1.5 billion years ago. And in May 2022, Beijing reported that China's rover had discovered hydrated minerals on the site of an ancient ocean called Utopia Planetia. These indications of water date back just 700 million years. China's first Mars rover is going to be followed up with several more robotic exploration missions over the coming decade. 
The main purpose will be to collect samples for study and to scout out ideal landing sites and future base locations. The first of these missions is planned to launch in 2028. Tianwen-3 will consist of two Long March 5 rocket launches from Earth, one rocket carrying a lander and ascent vehicle, while the other holds an orbiter and return module. Though China did indicate that if their own prospective super heavy rocket, the Long March 9, is in service by this point, then both payloads can travel on a single launch. China's lander will gather dirt and rock collected from one small area using a process they describe as surface sampling, drilling, and mobile intelligence sampling, potentially using a four-legged robot. So this will not be a wide-ranging or diverse sample of what Mars has to offer. It's all going to be coming from one relatively small location, wherever they choose to land the robot. The ascent vehicle will consist of two stages, using either solid or liquid propulsion, and will be required to reach a speed of 4.5 kilometers per second to escape Mars gravity. After rendezvous and docking with the waiting orbiter, the spacecraft will depart from Mars in late October 2030 for a return to Earth in July 2031. And of course, China already has experience delivering samples from the moon, the nation's Chang'e 5 mission touched down on the moon in December 2020, and shortly after delivered to Earth the first lunar samples since the Soviet's Luna 24 mission back in 1976. The Chinese followed that up in 2024 with the first ever sample return from the far side of the moon on Chang'e 6. China expects to have gathered all of the necessary data from Mars by 2033, which is when they plan to send the first crewed mission to the Red Planet. This is an ambitious goal, and it's one that we've heard many times before from many people, mostly Elon Musk, but the Chinese seem to have put some thought into a plan that will back up their ambitions. The China Academy of Launch Vehicle Technology outlined the nation's Mars plan for the first time in June 2021. We know that the first step is robots, but then the next stage would be sending astronauts to Mars to build an outpost station. And they're not just talking about a simple matter of planting the flag and then calling it a day. China has scheduled to land people on Mars again in 2035, 2037, 2041, and 2043. Which is a good time to remember that when you leave for Mars, you're not coming home for at least two years if you come home at all. After eight months spent floating in a spaceship and arriving on the red planet, you have to wait a year for the Earth to come back around the sun before you can even consider a return trip. The third and final stage envisions forming a large-scale Earth-to-Mars cargo fleet departing Earth every two years. Early human missions would use a number of heavy lift rockets to construct the Mars spacecraft in orbit. The transport vehicle would then rendezvous and dock with a ferry stage using nuclear electric and nuclear thermal propulsion for Earth-Mars transfer. Cargo would fly to and land on Mars separately, and a Mars descent and ascent vehicle would transfer astronauts to and from the surface. The long-term vision would be developing reusable fleets of spacecraft, propellant depot for refueling in Mars orbit, and the use of cycle orbits to accomplish long-duration flights in a short time with minimal propellant. These cycle orbits are actually an idea put forward by NASA astronaut Buzz Aldrin, the second person to walk on the moon and basically uses gravity assist to maintain a spacecraft in a continuous orbit that intersects with both the Earth and Mars. So now we know how they'd get to Mars, but what would a Chinese Mars colony actually look like? What would they do out there? Well, in contrast to Mr. Musk, China has not expressed any interest in creating a self-sustaining city or advancing humanity into a multi-planet species. So we're not picturing the usual techno-utopia with giant glass domes and stuff. The Chinese are very dedicated to science and research. Look at all of the resources they've been pouring into their robotic exploration of the moon. No one else has done anything like that in over 50 years, not successfully at least, and the Chinese have succeeded on the moon where many have failed before them. China has accomplished things with their exploration of the moon's far side that no one else had even attempted. So we'd be expecting the same agenda to carry over into Mars. The primary goal here will be research and discovery, and that generally translates into a very stark utilitarian existence for those researchers. We are not expecting China's Martian outpost to be comfortable or aesthetic. 
Think of the brutal long-term research stations on Antarctica. Not a fun place to live, and the only people you'll find there outside of cruise ship season are the most dedicated scientists in their fields. China is already deep into studying methods to build on Mars using resources that are found on the Red Planet. The idea is to take Martian soil and melt it down into a glass-like solid that can then be pulled out into long fibers. Those glass fibers can then be spun together to create a strong composite material, and then that fiber-reinforced composite made from Martian soil can be used to build low-lying structures like huts and bunkers. So make no mistake, there is a race on for the planet Mars, but it's going to be entirely different than what we saw with the moon in the 1960s. You can't just plant a flag on Mars and then turn around and come home. Mars is much more complicated. You have to build and you have to survive for the long haul. And if Elon Musk thinks that he's going to have the red planet all to himself, then he might be in for a rude awakening.